Welcome to Lab Workshop uh, 1A, Part 1. So if you're in your Lab tab in Sakai, go to the Resources and you'll see a folder that says Lab Workshop 1A. If we open that folder up, the instructions that detail the steps I'm going to go through are there and we're going to open the data file. So we tell it to open. Enable editing. So this is the apartment selection problem that we modeled in the last lecture. So this is a weighted scoring model. We selected five criteria that we were going to use to model our satisfaction with any particular apartment. We assigned weights to those criteria, showing their relative importance. And then in this uh, spreadsheet, we've gone out and we've collected data on six different apartments. So on each of the criteria, we've rated an apartment on a scale from one to three, with three being the best score. So to do the analysis for our weighted scoring model, we need to calculate the total score for each apartment. So I'll add a total score column here. And to do that, I can type a formula into the total score cell. I can say equals, and then I can select cells. So our total score is going to be equal to our score for monthly cost for this particular apartment times the weight for monthly cost plus the score for location times the weight for location plus the score for cleanliness times the weight for cleanliness plus the score for roommates times weight for roommates plus score for room size times weight for room size. And when I'm finished, I can just press enter and it tells me that the total score for that apartment is 185. So I want to do that same process for each of the apartments. What happens if I try to copy this down? So if I do control C to copy and then I control V to paste, it doesn't seem to be doing it correctly. And the reason why that doesn't work is that Excel assumes that you are using relative reference references. So when I went and I pointed to B8, it said, okay, you want me to go over one, two, three, four, five rows and take the number that I found. And that's fine. That is what I wanted it to do. When I went and selected B5, Excel thinks, oh, okay, you want me to go over one, two, three, four, five columns, and then up one, two, three rows, and take what I find there. So that was good for this cell. But when I come to this cell, and I copy it down, it's the first thing it says is, sees is I want to go over one, two, three, four, five columns, take this number, which would be right. And then it says you want to multiply that by what I find when I go over one, two, three, four, five columns and up one, two, three rows. And it finds nothing there. So that's why that total score ended up as zero. So by default, Excel assumes you're using relative references. Now we can change a reference to an absolute reference. So I want my weights to be absolute references. I want to always go to row five when I'm looking for a weight. So this B5 selection here, I can turn that into an absolute reference by putting dollar signs. I can put dollar signs in front of both the column and the row. So that would make it an absolute reference. 
I can also, there is a shortcut for doing absolute references. If I go to C5, I want all of my weights, so everything in the row 5 I'm going to turn to an absolute reference. The shortcut is using, using your function 4 key on your keyboard. If I press the function 4 key, it'll put the dollar signs in for me. If I press it again, it puts it only on the rows. If I press it again, it puts it only on the column. If I press it again, it takes it off. And if I press it again, it puts them on. So I'll go for all of my row 5 references, and I'll press F4, and I'll change them all to absolute references. Now, 90% of the time when you want an absolute reference, putting the dollar sign on both the column and the row will work. There are occasions when you only want to use, put the dollar sign on the row or only on the column. We'll see an example of that uh, in a later lecture. So I say enter. Now if I copy this and paste it down, it will work. Okay, so we have calculated total score using a formula, by putting a formula into a cell. One other thing I should mention is that when I put in that formula, I happen to know the order of operations that Excel was going to do. Excel will always do multiplication before it does addition, and that's what I wanted it to do. However, if you're unsure about what order uh, the, that Excel is going to do the operations in, you should be make sure that you're putting brackets around your operations to get them done in the proper order. So now I'm going to delete these results and we're going to see how to calculate total score using an Excel function. So Excel has a function called sum product, which will take the sum of a number of products. The product is what you get when you multiply two numbers together. And that's really what we're doing here. So I can, in my cell here, I can say equals, and I start typing some product. Uh, as I start typing, it will give me suggestions. I can just double click, and it'll finish typing for me. And then with a the function, Excel will tell me exactly what it, I, it wants to see. So it wants to see array 1. So it wants to see the first set of cells that I want to use in my sum product. So I'll put the weights there as my first array. And then Excel tells me it wants a comma. So I'll type a comma. And then it wants array 2. So this is the other set of cells that I want to use in this sum product function. I can put the close bracket and I can say enter. And it gives me 185. What happens when I copy that and paste it down? Well, I have the same problem. So I do have to change my relative references to absolute references. I can do it a little more quickly this time. So I just select B5 to F5, where my weights are. I press function 4, the F4 key, it puts in the dollar signs. I say Enter, and now I can copy that function down and paste it and get the scores for all the other apartments. So one other thing I want to talk about here using this function, I will take it away again. If there's a set of cells that I'm using all the time, like the weights in a spreadsheet, then I can actually give that set of cells a name. So that's in the formula tab at the top. In the middle, about the middle here, it has name manager and define name. So I want to define a name. So I get this dialog box here, and it's suggesting a name because it sees that we have uh, the word weight in an adjacent cell. So that's fine for a name. And so I can say OK. So that group of cells will now be named weight. So now, when my total score, I can say equals some product. And all I have to do is type in weight. It'll actually suggest 
different named ranges that I have. I put the comma, I give it my second array here as a relative reference, and I say enter. And I can now copy that down and paste and get the correct scores because weight is, by definition, it's, it's an absolute reference. I want to do a little bit of work on charts. So we want to create a column chart of our total scores. So I'm going to select the cells with the total scores. I'm going to go to the Insert tab at the top. And in the middle here, we have a number of different charts. So at the moment, I want a column chart. I'll just pick the simplest two-dimensional column. And just like that, I get a chart. Now, anytime you have a chart, uh, you need to be, you're, you're going to be putting it into a report or a memo. You need to tell the person looking at the chart what it is they're looking at. So we want to make sure that all of our charts have titles and access labels. So while the chart is selected up here in chart layouts, I can choose different layouts. So I'll find one that's got titles and access labels. So here this layout 9 looks like what I want. So I'll ask for layout 9 and I can put a chart title here. So this is uh, my apartment selection problem. My y-axis is total score. My x-axis is the apartment. I don't need the legend over here, so I can just delete that. However, the apartments here, by default, it just labels them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I want them labeled A, B, C, D, E, and F, because that's what I've called them in my chart. So I can customize that. If I right click on the X axis, I get my right click menu and I can go down at the bottom. I can format the axis, but here what I want to do is choose the select data. So in select data, there's a few things I can do. I can switch rows and columns. And you may find sometime that you're working in a spreadsheet and you get unexpected results. This is always a good first check to just switch the row and column and see if you then get what you expected. I can also give uh, entries for my legend here, but what I really want to do is edit my horizontal axis labels. So I want to ed edit that and it's saying, where is your access label range? So this is what I want it to use as my access labels. And it's already preview, previewing that for me in the chart. I say OK. I say OK. And now my apartments are called A, B, C, D, E, F. I want to um, add data labels. Sometimes instead of someone just guessing that this score is between 250 and 300, if I right click on the bars, on one of the bars, I get a menu item that says add data labels. When I do that, it actually gives the actual value above each bar. So that's sometimes useful. I can also change the color of the bars. So again, if I am right clicked, if, if I right click on the bars on a bar again, I can format the data series at the bottom. I can do a lot of things here. I can, at the moment I want to change the fill. I can do a solid fill. I can pick a color or I can do a gradient fill. They have preset colors. So I can choose one of these preset colors and close. So you can really customize a chart, any of the different parts of your chart. Got a correct a spelling mistake there. I can customize the background. I can change the, the divisions in, in any of the axes. 
just by right clicking on a different component and then asking to format that component. Uh, another thing about charts is if I change something in my data here, so let's uh, say I've decided to revise my model and I want both mon monthly cost and location to be weighted at 25 points. So I make that change and I can see that all of the numbers here have changed to match my new total scores. I'll put that back. So the data remains tied the chart remains tied to the, to the data in our spreadsheet. The last thing I want to do is move the chart to a new sheet. So sometimes if I have a large spreadsheet and I want to do a lot of charts, it gets very cluttered, cluttered having the charts uh, in, in the, on top of the data. So if I select the chart again and go up and get my chart tools at the top, on the very right hand side here it says move chart location. If I click there, right now the chart is an object in this particular worksheet. I want it as a new sheet and I can give that new sheet a name. So this is the total score chart. I say OK. And now at the bottom here you can see I have two worksheets. This is the total score score chart, and this is the apartment selection problem. So our original table here without the chart. So I can just go back and forth. So you can put all of your charts on separate sheets, which is sometimes very useful. So that's the end of part one.